And this one I filled in with the neon green. So those are the ones that you get step by step in the packet. I'm going to have so much fun using this craft every day. It'll make me so happy. So let me show you how to finish this big guy. So I've already done the neon pink and I did the second coat to the large size dots on the neon pink. Now I'm going to fill in with the neon orange. I'm going to use a larger size stylus. I'm going to rest this on the table so that I can help balance me as opposed to holding it upright. And we're going to put some big neon orange dots down here. Then we're going to put a couple of these larger ones above the tail here. Oop, that guy's a little droopy. I had too much paint on my stylus. So let's just take a damp Q-tip. Just roll off the extra water on my paper towel after I dipped it into my brush tub. And then we'll just take that paint off of there. And then we can redo them. Get rid of any fluff from the Q-tip. Nice and bright, eh? Now I'm going to go down to a smaller size, second smaller size. So this is the second largest one, but I don't want to have my piece this way because I don't want to rest my hand in that wet stuff. So let's flip it upside down. So I'm using the number two, and I'm going to fill in along here with some orange. And along here with some orange. Let's block that dot. Let's put one in there. Let's put a couple out here. And a couple more up here. And then coming, leaving a bit of space from these dots, I'm going to put like a little row out here. That little floating row. That will fill in around it later with the yellow and the green. Now, down below me, I have like a floor fan, so I'm going to set this guy on the floor in front of my floor fan to dry. That's usually what I do, because I usually work on more than one project at a time. And while he's setting up, I'm going to show you how to clean out your brushes with the brush cleaners. So this is Deco Magic Brush Cleaner. You can actually use it for cleaning out your jewelry as well. If you follow, check out their website, they'll show you. So this is for cleaning out, like for instance, your number four filbert. You take out a little bit of the cleaner, enough to dress your bristles, so you don't need a big puddle, but enough so that your bristles are soaked in there. And then you just tap, tap, tap on that, that soft angle, just the same way you tap in your brush tub. So not straight up and down, but just on a soft angle. And then leaning into both ferrule corners. And then flip your brush over, same thing on the other side. And then when you hold it down on a clean piece of paper towel, you want to watch where your ferrule touches. If there's no color there, then your brush is clean. And you can just rinse them out to get rid of that cleaner. And then you could either keep painting with the brush, or if it's the end of your painting session, like I won't be using this brush anymore, then I like to use the Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver. This is like a solid paste. And you take your brush with a little bit of water, and then you gently brush back and forth, not back and forth, back and forth, but back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> Does that make sense? So just gently with your brush and that will loosen up this thick cleaner and create a paste in your brush. 
No, let me get something back. So it's covering the brush. Kind of looks like Santa Claus's beard. And then what you do is you shape your brush back to its natural shape. So I start on top of the ferrule, pull along the ferrule and flatten the bristles. Shape the sides of the bristles. So the brush goes back to the natural shape that it is. Here's a brand new one. The bristles are nice and tight together. And then you leave it like that to dry and you just leave it flat without the bristles touching anything. You don't want the bristles leaning on anything or they'll dry like that. Because what this conditioner does is it allows your it condi or the conditions your brushes as this is sitting in it but it also helps your brush maintain its shape because this will dry hard it should dry so hard that you should be able to tap on the table with it and it doesn't move then you know you put enough in it if it does move and it's bendy after it's dry then you need to put a little bit more of that foam in it the next time so that'll help your brush really maintain its shape and then the next time you go to use it you do like I just did there and you rinse it out and then you're good to go again. So here I'll show you one more time. You create a little paste. Work that paste up in your brush. Ideally not going up your ferrule. Run your hands down your ferrule and over your bristles to shape them back to his natural shape. And then you let them dry like that. Set them aside so he dries flat. And he should set up overnight. It should be nice and like, I was, you know, pretty close to hard as a rock. Awesome. So that's how you clean your bristles, kids. And then we'll check on our big big fish down there. So I like the floor fan because then I can work on another rock while one rock's drying. So these big ones are pretty set up. So let's come in around them and do some smaller ones. So I've got the second smallest size, which is the four. Oh yeah, the reason I like to put the paint in the lid is because it doesn't dry out. Whereas if I were to take the paint and I put that orange on a plastic lid, it would start to dry out as soon as it hits the surface. But when it's thick in the lid here, it really doesn't dry out. You might get a little bit along the edge and stuff, but you can easily peel that out. It's not a big deal. Out of all the different methods I've tried over painting and teaching for the last 20 years, that is my favorite method for doing the mandaling. You can see what works for you. If you have a better method, I'd love to know. And also, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, I'm happy to hear from you. You can find me on my Instagram, on my Facebook page. Let's paint with Sharon. Maybe you have some suggestions for videos. This one was suggested by Mel. Thank you, Mel. Mel saw my painted rock, and she's asked me if I could do that as a video. And I said, I sure can, lady. And that's why we're doing it today. So now I'm just starting to add some smaller dots around those big guys to fill in. One of my favorite things to do around the big circles, like the big dots, to see this guy here, is walk the dot around it. So go around that big dot, and each time you dot it gets smaller. That's walking the dot around a big dot. That guy right there. So that's what I did for a lot of these these big uh, neon pink ones. Looks so cool. I love it. So relaxing too. Nice. I like it. You'll know if you like it because it feels good. If it's, if it's like something's not feeling right, then you know, hmm, what did I miss or what did I do? Something's not looking good there. If you're not feeling good about it, try and put your finger on it. Or even better, it's so great when you're painting with friends and people or you're in a class because you can get feedback from other people and they might see things that you don't see. I just see like where I have two oranges too close together. So I'm just going to nick this guy off. And because that first one was dry already from the fan, I could overlap him with the wet paintbrush and he doesn't come off. Lovely. 
So let's put a few smaller ones in along the top here. And over in here. The variety between the larger dots and the small dots on your surfaces is really attractive, I think. I like having a good variety in there. But as you'll paint, you'll see what you like and what your preferences are, what you like or what you don't like. Remember, if you don't like something, you can easily nick it off. Now, the last part I'm going to put some is just along his little, uh, up above his uh, lower fins here. Oh, I got too close. I'm overlapping my neon pink, so I'm just going to pop those right off. Do them again. Now, I see I have some black here. Is that from today? From before? If it hasn't been seven days and it hasn't cured, because curing takes seven days, then it'll come off. If that didn't come off, I could just paint over it with the metallic blue. So there's always something you could do. If you ever run into trouble and you're not too sure and nothing's coming to mind of how you can fix it, feel free to send me a message and I'll give you a hand. Or come by for a class if you're in uh, the neighborhood. Um, right now, I know with the COVID, my studio is not open, so I'm doing these free videos for you. But uh, in the future, we could be opening. We're waiting and seeing. Okay, there's my orange. It's a nice contrast to the pink. All right. So I'm just going to set him in front of the fan that's on my floor for a second. So it can dry a little bit while I get the next color ready. So the next color is going to be our yellow. So we've got yellow, then we've got green, and then we've got blue, and then we're all done. Alright, so for the yellow, we're going to come up and fill in along the top of the fin. So I'm going to turn them upside down so I can get that, that area easier. Over time, too, you'll get used to the size of dots that each of the styluses will give you. Whether when you're walking the dot, you'll know, okay, when I dot three times, what kind of size dot that'll give me. My hand slid a little bit on one guy there, and he's not too circular. He looks a little more of an oval. So I'll see if I can take him off without taking off the one beside him. If it's not possible, then sometimes I just clean out that whole area and redo that whole area. It doesn't matter. You just do whatever you got to do. When someone's looking at your finished project, they won't know you had to do that. Only if you tell them. There we go. Then I'll let that dry and I'll come back to that area. So I'm going to put some down this fin. So filling in along the top fins. using the second smallest sized stylus ball. Now I'm going to start to fill in a little bit in between the fins, or in between the top fin rows here, I mean. one row, then we'll go underneath the second row, and then I'm going to put some here along the top of the floating vertical row. Oh, let's go along the top of him too. 
And I just remembered, I forgot to put orange along the bottom, so let's make this guy yellow. Nice. That's nice and bright. On that third vertical floating row. Now I'm going to do a few more yellows along the top of the tail's edge. So I'm just going to walk that guy along. just down from the edge. I like to leave a, some of the black, the dark base coat showing there. Then I'm going to go in and around these floating orange ones. This carafe is going to make me feel so happy every time I use it. Painting just really brings a lot of happiness into your life, man. You can really be proud of what you make. Never mind the gifts and stuff you can give. I don't to boot that uh, it's actually fun making it so it's a win-win you have fun creating it you have fun giving it people love what you're giving them they enjoy having it now this line here along the top of the back fin is a bit straight for me so I'm going to add a few more dots underneath it just to break up the straight line of it. That looks good. Hey Santana. My border collie's here helping me. 